Hello and welcome back to the Navigating 20 something podcast. My name is Charlotte and I am desperately trying to navigate my 20s as a 25 year old. It's a hard time so let's navigate our 20s together basically. Today we're going to be talking all about spending time alone. Um, we're going to talk about the actual act of spending time alone, how I feel about it um, and then I'm going to run through some tips on how you can enjoy spending time alone a lot more because I do think it is something that is really really important. Now I have tried to record this episode already and I was waffling a lot so we're going to try and go through this in a bit more of a concise and clear way because I was just talking sporadically. So obviously, as you, as I've said, I think that spending time alone is something that is really, really important. But I understand why a lot of people don't spend time alone. And when I was writing the piece of writing, <laughs> the article, whatever you want to call it, that goes with this, that will be up on my Medium if you're new to this podcast. Every week I do my episode that is a podcast, but it is always based around the article that I have written. This is just more of a discussion, more of a casual chit chat, whereas the article is more of a formal piece of writing. Um, so yes, um, when I was writing that, I was doing some research and I found a, it was an like an analysis from the, the Office of National Statistics. Um, and, it spent, and it found that those between 25 and 54 spent the least time alone um, of their leisure time. And it quantified leisure time as being the, just anything outside of work hours basically. So yeah, it found that those, that group of people spent the less time alone, but then it also found that they were more likely to not enjoy their time alone, which is something that I think is really important is what is why I think spending time alone is important because the less time we spend alone, the less likely we're gonna enjoy it. And there's so many different reasons for that. So what I'm gonna do is kind of run through points in my life and say when I wasn't spending time alone and why I didn't enjoy those times, if that makes sense. So going back to some of the first times I remember not really enjoying time by myself, I have like sixth form, um, my gap year and my t my first couple of years at uni pre-COVID so I definitely remember not enjoying time by myself at those times and sixth form I kind of understand I think obviously like it's very much time of self-discovery like you're young you're kind of forming ideas um depending on like your friendship group it can be you want to spend as much time with your friendship group as possible to like make sure you're in everyone's good books like it's a bit of a weird time with all of that stuff so I definitely understand it that then um I was also like for, I would say, kind of from the age of 15, I've always had issues with my mental health. Um, sixth form was definitely like a difficult time for me. It was when I got to diagnosed with depression and anxiety. So I definitely think that a lot of the reasons that I wanted to spend time with people was because when I was spending time alone, I was very much confronted with the feelings of depression and anxiety. So yeah, it's very understandable that I wanted to be alone. Or I wanted to be with people at that time to hide the feelings or like not be confronted by those feelings which obviously like I definitely think is something that does make sense um and then kind of the same I guess coming through like in my gap year the reason I took a gap year is because I didn't have a fucking clue what I wanted to do I was lost really really lost and I think again like the reason that I didn't want to spend time alone was because I would be confronted with those ideas and I think this is a reason why a lot of people don't like spending time alone is because when we're alone, we're confronted with our thoughts, we're confronted with who we are and we're confronted with like, we're confronted with a shitload of stuff that we normally hide behind basically. And when you're alone and you're not really doing anything, it's really hard to ignore those feelings, which can lead to spirals. And it's definitely something that's led to spirals with me, which is not something that I really found in uni. In uni, I was very social. I saw my friends. We did something all day, every day. We were rarely apart. We were at the library together. We would then get drunk in our flats. I was asleep. I was alone when I was asleep and when I was on my way to lectures and that is pretty much it like I did not spend a lot of time alone at that time um which then meant on the days when I was maybe forced to spend time alone because people were working they'd gone home or whatever other reason it it fucked me up <laughs> in the, the bluntest way it had a really really big effect on me mentally when I was spending time alone in that time 
um, I would very much just go into a bit of a crisis. And again, I think it all comes back to the fact that I had these mental health problems that I was kind of hiding from. I'd kind of pretended that they didn't exist anymore because I wasn't spending enough time alone to actually be confronted by them. Um, so they were, in my mind, they weren't there. So then when I spent time alone, they very much were there and it was very real and it made me hate spending time alone. But now I very much enjoy spending time alone. So how did I bridge that gap? I suppose you were asking from being someone that was constantly like running from the idea of their mental health, their emotions around their mental health to now feeling way more comfortable. Um, and it's honestly just from making myself spend time alone. Now, it's not like a super easy thing to make sure that you're spending time alone obviously if you are a busy person if you're working something like a nine to five and then you have a partner and whatever else you're a busy social person it can be really difficult to spend time alone just in your schedule which may be why you don't enjoy it which is understandable but it is also really important because the more you kind of don't spend that time alone and the more you escape those feelings you're not going to enjoy spending time alone because you're going to associate spending time alone with those negative feelings rather than something that can be a positive form of self-discovery and self-expression and all of these other things like there are so many benefits that have been found to spending time al alone which include improved person like personal exploration increased creativity and more social energy so it is super important to be spending that time alone um and it's definitely something that we want to make sure that we are doing so how can we do it and how can we make sure that we are enjoying it so obviously I've said like we need to make sure that we are doing it to enjoy it but how can we get there like how can we actually end up liking it if that makes sense so um the most important thing is to make sure that you are blocking off time to spend by yourself. So this could be the gym. I definitely think for me that going to the gym was one of the first ways I started to enjoy spending time by myself because it was, it started to become like the only time I was spending by myself, um, especially like at uni when I was being super social, I was either going to the gym or doing work. They were the two times that I spent by myself. So I think going to the gym is honestly one of the, a really good way to start spending time by yourself. Another good way is going for walks. Um, and to start with you can go for walks listening to podcast and then I think going to walks and listening to music can be a really good way to start exploring your thoughts and feelings more because at the end of the day when we're spending our time alone one thing that we do want to make sure that we are doing is actually like being present and thinking about what we're feeling because if we are clout with we're using all of our alone time to like and we're filling it with stuff we're reading books we're listening to podcasts we're watching Netflix we're not really spending that time alone we're still using these distraction techniques and I think when we're spending I think it's really important even to make sure that we are spending a solid amount of time alone so making sure that we are kind of gradually and I do think it it is worth making sure it's a bit more of a gradual thing weaning yourself from always listening to a podcast on a walk to listening to music to not listening to anything and then same with other ways that we can spend time alone I think another really good way of like spending time alone and definitely like having that exploration of your feelings especially when you do start spending that time alone and you start to find scary feelings is through journaling I love journaling <laughs> I love it so much and I think it's a really really good way to spend that time alone because when we are journaling we are really exploring our thoughts and feelings and we can just write down anything that is coming into our head and yes you are doing something so you feel a bit more proactive I'd say but it is obviously a way that you are exploring those emotions that can come with being alone especially when you are getting used to spending that time alone and then kind of once you are past that I think that is when you can start to really do things alone because I do think it is super important to take yourself to do things um, and not always be really reliant on those around you I think it's really important to have that sense of independence and be happy to go and do things by yourself like if you want to go to a specific coffee shop and none of your friends are available or none of them are that keen like they're not they're like I don't really see the fuss 
like maybe they don't appreciate nice coffee shops or whatever or whatever it is whatever you want to say it is it could be pottery painting none of your friends are interested in that but you really really want to go you need to be able to like learn to feel comfortable doing those things by yourself because you're gonna end up living like oh, without being nasty it's gonna end up being quite an unfulfilling life if you are never doing the things that you want to do because you're too scared to do them alone and the people around you don't want to do things with you for all like they don't have the exact same interests as you or whatever like you're or you feel like you have to do like a lot of the solo date things that I do and want like want to do are things that would be more traditional like dates like I wouldn't count them as things I like do you know what I mean they're normally things you see people do with a date for example and if I like I'm single I'm wanting to stay single at the moment if I was like I couldn't do that because I, I'm single I'm gonna miss out on so many fun things that I want to do and then I'm more likely to end up in a relationship that one I don't want to be in two probably not the right person for me just because I want to go on dates <laughs> like that's not a good thing that's not nice for me and it's not nice for the other person and it's not nice for the people that like if say if I say you basically use someone for fun dates, it's not fun for their subsequent partners that will have after me because they've like the whole hurt people hurt people thing. So it's such an important thing to make sure that like you are happy to do things by yourself so that one you have a like a fulfilling life and two you don't end up in unhappy relationships and unhappy friendships that are formed on the grounds of needing some someone to do something with. Like that's not a happy and healthy life to live and you're gonna feel so much better off just like biting the bullet and doing things like going back to when I went to New Year, I didn't have anyone to go with um like I could have asked my mum to go but she was busy with work um none of my friends like were, were like people that I was like yeah I like would want to go on holiday with you and I know that we'd want to spend the the whole time doing the exact same thing like I know yeah do you know what I mean like I knew that a lot of the people in my life they wouldn't want to do the, the things I wanted to do there like I wanted to go surfing I wanted to go to the Eden project um I wanted to just spend time at the beach doing nothing just at the beach I knew a lot of the people in my life wouldn't want to do those things so I went by myself and by going by myself it meant that I could spend the time exactly how I wanted to which is really important because I left feeling happy I felt fulfilled um and I got I, I felt like I ticked the boxes of what I wanted to whilst I was there whereas when I have gone on holidays before with friends and we maybe couldn't agree on what we wanted to do um I'd end up leaving the place and they're like oh I like I had a nice time on this holiday but I didn't get to do the things I really wanted to do which subsequently made me, me feel shitty like when I went to Tenerife we didn't go to the water park I was like oh no that, that, that's, that's shit like I didn't get to do that and just little things like that and they they seem silly but if you live your whole life never doing those kind of things you're gonna feel awful it's even like when I was like 16 went to New York with my parents my interest and my parents interest especially for New York wildly different so there's lots of things that we didn't do there and then now I'm like oh I'm really sad I didn't get to do that and obviously it's somewhere like New York like there's enough to do that I can go back but <laughs> the whole kind of principle of like if I um it, if I did every trip like that then it would always feel really really unfulfilling um so it's definitely something that like we want to be conscious of and again from spending time alone we learn the things that we really really want to do as well everything that I can I, I like everything I've learned about myself I've learned by myself like I coming back to going to New Quay, I went surfing and whilst I was obviously in a group surfing I learned that I enjoyed surfing like that is something that I learned about myself um I learned that I really value like just a, more of a simple life where I can get, just go for walks I can be by the sea I don't need to have like like I, I literally stayed in the shed I I learned I don't need loads of like crazy materialistic things like if I'm just doing things that make me feel really good on the inside and make me feel like alive um like even surfing it made me realize that like I wouldn't go as far as says I'm a thrill seeker but I like things that make me feel like 
like they give me a bit of an adrenaline rush like I'm not I wouldn't go as far to say as like I'm an adrenaline junkie but I like doing things that give me that rush of adrenaline I guess it's the same reason that like I like going to the gym and training to Philly I like that little rush that you get when it's like ooh. um but yeah doing those kind of things alone and spending the time alone like makes you realize that you like what you really like so it is it is really important and then kind of bringing that back to making sure you have fulfilled relationships and friendships when you're spending time alone when you know what you enjoy you know what you want from the people around you because if you're constantly like filling your, your time with other people and they're people that you kind of mold your interests to be more like their interests because maybe you're not sure of your own interests or whatever you end up then like constantly surrounding yourself by those people and then it's going to take one day where you spend a little bit of time alone for me this was lockdown um i had a group of friends at uni um that like they we were the same kind of people um and i like i that's no disrespect i don't mean that in a shitty way if any of them happen to be watching this i don't mean that in a rude way but i had some character I think maybe at one point we were quite similar people and then I grew apart and because I was always spending time with them I didn't really realize that we'd grown apart until I spent time by myself and that was hard to realize so it's why we need to spend time by ourselves why we need to spend time checking in with ourselves with our interests with what we actually like what we genuinely like because otherwise you can end up in these situations where you are then forced to spend time by yourself like I was in lockdown that made me realize that these people weren't like I wasn't similar to them anymore I didn't have mutual interest with them I didn't have this, any common ground other than being at uni um and it took being forced to be away from that to then realize and that like that wasn't the person I was anymore and it became a really a really difficult realization to have whereas if I'd have just maybe spent more time alone more time like thinking about who I was it wouldn't have been such a stark realization it would have felt more natural and more gradual rather than like a cream pie in the face kind of realization um and that's definitely like one of the reasons why I think spending time alone is so important is that it means that you can have these more slow realizations rather than a bam cream pie to the face like it just makes you more sure of yourself and now I know that we're never ever going to be like 100% sure of who we are because as people we are ever evolving and ever changing but it's really important to be present with that and I do think that like the only way that you can be present with those changes is by spending time alone which is why I think it's so important and why it's so important to feel comfortable with spending time alone so push yourself out of your comfort zone and like just dedicate a little bit of time to taking those baby steps to being alone as I said earlier take the first step of going for a walk today with a podcast with no one else you're not going to drag your partner along you're not going to drag your friends along you're going to go for a walk by yourself you're going to listen to a podcast you're going to do that for a week then you're going to change the podcast you're not going to go for a podcast anymore you're going to listen to music then you're going to do a few weeks of that and then you are going to try and go for a walk with nothing but your thoughts and you're going to sit so walk along and process them in a healthy way and if that is something that is really overwhelming if you are struggling with that even at the music stage instead of going for a walk you're going to spend that time journaling and you're going to write out all of those thoughts that you're having and you're going to think about why why they're scary thoughts why are they confronting thoughts why are they difficult for thoughts and you're going to really like learn to know yourself from that journaling the journaling can be done in like a brain dumping way it can be done in a stream of consciousness but get those thoughts out and come to terms with them and try and learn why you're feeling them and you're going to need to spend more time alone to do this to have these realizations um and then eventually like once you're comfortable doing that once you're comfortable confronting those feelings this is when you can start to really do things alone because you're going to feel comfortable and i definitely think we need to take those steps of becoming comfortable by doing those smaller things and confronting those thoughts before we dive into doing things that are like fully alone like going for meals alone going on a solo trip going to the cinema all of that kind of stuff because if i'd have gone on a solo trip without confronting my thoughts when i was alone and becoming comfortable with those thoughts 
it would not have gone the way it went. It would have ended up with me not leaving the little cabin thing and being like just not okay because or what like something else but like because I'd had that time and I know how I felt when I was alone I'd confronted those thoughts I worked through them started to enjoy that time alone enjoy what happens like enjoy the way that thoughts can pass through me when I'm alone compared to with like in a group setting or just on a one-to-one -one setting with another person it meant I was able to actually enjoy that time so I think I'm gonna wrap this podcast up here um I am hoping that this has made sense. I'm gonna edit it, and if it didn't make sense, we're gonna go again. But hopefully, everything has kind of made sense. Hopefully, this has been helpful. Um, as I kind of said, like these podcast episodes are meant to just be more of like my thoughts, my ideas, as opposed to anything like groundbreaking. So hopefully, it's worked out in that way. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, especially if you've made it this far. I do really enjoy making these, and I'm looking forward to continue to making more in the in the future. Um, but that is everything. Thanks again for tuning in and I will catch you hopefully in the next one.